Hey sis. <laughs> if you've never been here before, my intro is always hey guys, but I feel like sis has just become a brand at this point. So I feel like my alter ego jumped out today and came in full clutch. And I don't really know what to do about it, but I'm really liking it. Even though I'm looking real sister shady right now, coming for everyone's brand, I'm doing actually a pretty decent video today. Like, I'm not going to be that shady. I feel like there has been a trend going on. Well, multiple trends right now. And I'm loving each and every one of them. Other than lazy YouTubers, those can go f themselves. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, watch my previous video. It'll be linked in the description down below. There are commentary channels. There are reaction channels. There's the beauty community. All of those are huge right now. But there are also these that are called relatable YouTubers. And there is a bunch of YouTubers coming out right now and blowing the f up because they are those like relatable YouTubers. I'm putting relatable in kind of quotation marks because what's relatable to some isn't relatable to all. And I wanna make that very clear. When I say these are relatable YouTubers, there's, they're like the YouTubers that the majority will relate to. But of course, there are people that will not find them relatable and they'll find James Charles relatable. And there are people that will find Jeffree Star relatable. There are people that will find me relatable, but we're not all the same person. Stuff like relatable is very subjective. These are like, this is the real me kind of relatable youtubers the first relatable youtuber that i found personally and the one that i fell in love with is emma chamberlain she hasn't been around for that long her channel was created in june of 2016 but it is already on 5 million subscribers sis tell me your secrets we're gonna break it down and we're gonna see why these youtubers are doing what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it so well emma chamberlain in the last 30 days has gained 440,000 subscribers which is actually a decrease of decrease of 47 percent in the last 30 days she has also gained over 44 million views which is also a decrease of 25 percent she gets an average of about 15,000 subscribers a day and an average of 1.5 million views a day sis is doing great now if we look into her channel that's where we see the tea so you know strap yourself in if you want five million subscribers in a year and we'll go on this ride together if we go back to her oldest videos her oldest videos were things like lookbooks and how to diy stuff and just a lot of clothing stuff but i realized oh and also vlogs that's where her vlogs kind of started coming in and i feel like she wasn't really feeling that kind of content now if you go into her most i was gonna say most newest as if that was proper english her newest content it's always kind of well now she's kind of branching out which i'm kind of really enjoying she does a lot of vlogs she does a lot of thrifting but she also does like funny videos so she did an accurate school lookbook four days ago which was one of my favorite videos of hers i thought it was hilarious she did uh, my I made myself dinner which is actually a part of like what she does she also does cooking videos which are always hilarious because she doesn't really know how to do that uh no tea no shade but you know there's a vegetarian tries meat for the first time because she's vegetarian the thing about her being relatable is the iced coffee with the driving around playing music that whole thing and i think people can finally relate to someone and she's so like chill to hang out with that you kind of feel like you're hanging out with a friend rather than like an overproduced video where you feel like you're watching a tv show so i feel like that's what i mean by like relatable you can almost feel like you're hanging out with them without actually hanging out with them but what i think draws people in and what i think has become a trend now is the editing i feel like the editing does a lot it it, it adds a lot to the videos and i'm never gonna say that editing is overshadowing their personality but i feel like it's it's definitely enhancing their personality and i feel like even with myself the more things i learn how to do with an editing software the more i feel like my videos are getting like the flair so i'm like hoping to learn how to do the whole face distortion and all of that stuff because then i feel like it adds a lot to the comedy aspect and the entertainment aspect of the video but i feel like that's something you kind of learn in the process it's kind of how they learn you know you don't just know it from the get-go you kind of get into it and i feel like if you know emma chamberlain you know her editing techniques like that now she does ken burns if you don't know what ken burns is it's the whole zooming in on the face slowly while you're saying something i do it a ton because i feel like if a segment of a video you feel like it's funny but it's not funny enough just ken burns that it's automatically 10 times funnier she does like face distortions she adds a lot of audio which i don't do much because i never think about the audio and i probably should like this is a learning curve for all of us i feel like audio is very important and it can really enhance a certain clip she as well as the other youtubers i'm going to talk about really really love 
their audio, their little music, all of that stuff. So I kind of want to get into that. And overall, just being a meme. It's just being a walking, talking, breathing meme. And I love it. I can't get enough. And then recently people have been telling me to check out Joanna. I'm not sure how to pronounce her surname, so I'm going to put it on the screen right now because I don't want to be trash, but also don't want to butcher her surname. So sis, it's here. <laughs> Who I started watching her videos like today in the morning and I know now why she gets the recognition she gets. So her most recent video that I watched is turning myself into a cookie monster. She basically, she dyes cotton balls and sticks them on her face. That is commitment to content. She did a following a uh, Rob Boss painting, which is Bob Ross painting, which is kind of what Jenna Marbles did as well. The fattest Q&A video ever. See, this is how you do a Q&A video. Add a lot of comedy to it, a lot of personality to it. You don't make it boring. You don't do the same questions. I've seen YouTubers ask on Twitter or on Instagram for questions for a Q&A. And I saw some juicy questions, questions that could really spice up the video. And then they take all the boring ones, like what's your favorite? color why would you pick that one why wouldn't you pick the fattest like juiciest questions that you could see there but instead you go for the boring if you're gonna do a q a at least do it right or add a lot of personality to it the way joanna does the thing is with gem joanna and emma and i say that and some people are gonna get offended if they only like one of them and i'm comparing them to each other but i find them very similar editing style is practically identical but then again i'm not in any way shape or form saying that either one of them is copying either one of them because i don't think they are i think it is literally just an editing trend right now like people want to know how to edit like that because editing like that is so much more funny than just jump cuts like jump cuts are so done like yeah you're gonna cut out the ums the likes the pauses the breaks but add some flair to it that's what i'm trying to learn how to do i feel like the editing styles are very similar i feel like they have a very similar sense of humor like that sarcastic dry sense of humor which i personally find the funniest they have very similar lifestyles where they don't pretend to have this extravagant oh my god look at me doing rich things you know they have very like down to earth lifestyles or at least they show that and i'm gonna get into that thesis but they also are like the types of girls that like don't give a they don't put on makeup they don't do that whole shebang which is kind of like they don't put too much pressure on themselves to look good if they don't want to look good like some people don't want to put on makeup and that's fine a like this wants to put on makeup she loves her makeup but some people don't and if you feel like to be a youtuber you have to look perfect all the time and do your makeup and all this then you don't clearly because these people are doing just fine my dad just rolled up so she started posting videos three months ago even though her channel was created in december of 2017 she in the last 30 days has gained almost 900,000 subscribers and in the last 30 days she has gained about 23 million views she gets about thirty thousand subscribers a day and about seven hundred and seventy five thousand views a day the next person that i want to talk about is very similar in some ways but also very different in some ways to the channels that i have just mentioned so that's why i want to talk about them so the thing that is difficult to explain here is like i'm not actually sure if they ever said what gender they want to be referred to as and i'm not gonna assume a sis is just being respectful that's what it is antonio gaza is on 1.6 million subscribers and is getting in the millions of views per video except there is a lot of makeup with emma chamberlain and joanna they don't wear makeup that's kind of their whole spiel they're like i don't give a Mm. With Antonio, there is a lot of makeup, it's a lot of glam, and I think that's what differentiates Antonio from Emma and Joanna. But the editing style is so similar. The jokes, the comedy, the humor overall, the style of the videos, the way they flow is very similar to the way Emma and Joanna both film and edit their videos. And I feel like those three are like the holy trinity right now. They are getting the views, they are getting the subs, and they have a very distinct style to filming and editing their videos which just goes to show that that seems to be the trend now and if you learn how to edit like that great but if this is not your style don't do it like if someone is going to just copy this style because they feel like they'll get popular over it but it just doesn't suit their personality whatsoever then it will not work out sis like i personally really love that editing style and that filming style and that humor style and i feel like it just takes a lot of practice to get into it but if this is not your cup of tea then if you're planning to be a youtuber don't just steal this all together because it won't 
be genuine and it won't look like you and I feel like a lot of people are now accusing other YouTubers of stealing Emma's, Joanna's and Antonio's editing style when I don't think there's anything to steal there. It's functions in editing softwares that are available to everyone for you to use how you please and I don't think that's in any way stealing their style. I feel like yeah they were the ones that kind of made that style big but they are definitely not the ones that like invented it because it's always been in those editing softwares like Ken Burns. She's always been there. Sis was present way before they even made their channels. Face distortions, audio distortions, like PewDiePie has been doing that for such a long time now. So I don't think they necessarily invented these editing styles, but they definitely made them more prominent in the YouTube scene right now. And I feel like that's why people are accusing other YouTubers of stealing or copying that editing style because they are the ones that are like known for it. I think they have very loyal fan bases and that's also the problem. It's a blessing and a curse all at once. It's kind of like Dan and Phil. If you've got a very loyal fan base that will go above and beyond to protect you and make you look good and make others look bad to make you look good. That is not the whole fan base, just like a minority that are overly loyal. And I feel like that's where the attack on other YouTubers comes in from. Yeah, so I think that's kind of the main points that I wanted to hit on as far as these channels and the style of it goes. I feel like anyone at this point that drives a car and vlogs at the same time, drinks iced coffee, puts on lip balm or uses face and audio distortions and Ken Burns is automatically copying these three channels and I completely disagree. I think everyone has the right to use them and they have the right to use them in their own way and I think it's it will be obvious when someone is copying them but for now I don't think I've found anyone that's like blatantly just copying them for the sake of copying them. I feel like people are just being inspired and there's the difference. There's a difference between copying and being inspired. Now there's been a lot of drama surrounding Emma Chamberlain. Not as much with Joanna and Antonio because I don't I haven't heard of any drama with Antonio and Joanna hasn't been around for long enough to be involved in drama. We'll give her some time, you know, we'll let her settle in. <laughs> With Emma, obviously, I'm gonna just quickly hit on the things. I have made an Emma Chamberlain video, which I will link in the description down below as well if you wanna watch that. But there have been a few things that I'm just gonna skim over right now if you can't be asked to watch that whole video, sis, I get it. She was accused of bully of being a bully back in high school and then her dad came out and said that that's not true because she was actually like in a mainly rich people school and she wasn't and she was the one that was being bullied instead of being the one that was bullying. She was then accused of being like two-faced to a person at an event who basically followed her around because they didn't have the badge and stuff and then Emma had to walk them back to the hotel. Emma explained it in a vlog and she was like, I didn't even know her, like it was kind of annoying, whatever. But then videos came out when they were like having fun together. I think it's difficult if you weren't there to decide who's at fault. Vloggers will exaggerate certain things in vlogs to make them more interesting. Like that's not a new concept, like it's been done before and it doesn't necessarily make them a liar. It just means they want to spice up their vlog. It's fun sis like it's not that deep but also we can't just knock her down for it because we don't know we weren't there and the third thing that is able to be proven is her merch her merch was overly overpriced and actually Joanna made a video kind of making Emma's merch at home and that was a really funny video but Emma's merch was really overpriced and I understand that she justified it by saying that it's handmade and everything but I've seen handmade things that weren't that expensive and all the things were like blurred out at the start and they all came in one size Emma and this is where I hit on the whole relatability problems is that when she moved to LA everyone said you know your videos changed I feel like her videos didn't change because she necessarily moved to LA her videos were already different before she moved to LA that's because people get comfortable in front of the camera the only thing you can do as a YouTuber is not promise that you're not going to change as long as you don't make that bold claim that she made you're fine because you never promised that you would stay the same so you don't have to stay the same but she kind of said oh you know LA's not going to change me and then she went there and people were like oh it changed you and it was a whole fiasco and now I'm going to get into the conclusion of the video. People ask me with how quickly these channels grew, what is their future? How long is this gonna last? And in my opinion, it's difficult to tell because some trends last ages and some trends are like this and they're done. The fact that these channels grew so quickly is a little bit dangerous because people fall in love and fall out of it very quickly. But also the fact that they are basically built on being relatable is difficult to keep up. And now let's look at, you know, previous YouTubers that we've spoken about, the Graveyard Girls, the Zoellas, the Alfies, the Caspers, the Joes. They used to be really relatable because they were just like us. And then once the YouTube fame kicked in and once the money kicked in, we can't expect them to be the same people because they're not. They are millionaires with businesses and investments and huge channels. We can't possibly expect them to be the same person sitting in their bedroom in front of a 
camera and I think that's the difficult part about being a relatable channel is how long can you realistically be relatable for right now these girls are like average teens who are like oh I'm just doing what average teens do and then Emma Chamberlain all of a sudden has like an off-white keychain how are people gonna react to that because personally to me that's not a huge problem I don't care spend your money on what you want to spend your money on but I feel like there are a lot of people who are gonna get turned off by the fact that they're not as relatable as they used to be because obviously views money those are two big aspects that can change a person and I'm not saying it changes them for the worst to me it's a great opportunity for them if that makes sense like i'm happy for them but i feel like some people do have a problem with youtubers getting rich and that relatability can wear off very quickly like right now it's a unique selling point for them like oh i'm just like you i'm quirky i'm relatable and then once they can't hide the money anymore how relatable are they going to be that's my problem i feel like that's kind of where i want to end it on like i want to leave that to you guys if you want to express your opinion in the comment section down below you are more than welcome to me i think it's difficult to tell where they will be in a few years time because are people only subscribed for the fact that they're relatable are people subscribed because they genuinely like their personality and is their opinion about them going to be swayed by the fact that they have more views and more money and they are able to kind of show it more or they have to show it more because they can't hide it anymore and i don't expect them to ever hide it because that's disgusting to expect someone to pretend to be someone else for your entertainment but if people are subscribed for the relatability that could wear off very quickly if people are now subscribed for their personality and the personality remains the same even though their content changes and their lifestyle changes then I don't think they are on their way to dying out or irrelevancy like the road to irrelevancy is not here I don't know who she is and she is not here however I know that some people are definitely there for the fact that they're relatable and that could sway them into leaving I wish them all the best genuinely because I think that kind of content is really good I mentioned Emma in my previous video and how much I really like her content even though it's literally just vlogs and I wish them all the best however let me know what you think and any recommendations for future videos in the comment section down below give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on my post notifications so you know when i upload but usually i upload on wednesdays and sundays at around 8 p.m but usually closer to 9 p.m and follow me on all my socials they'll be on the screen right now or in the description down below and i'll see you in my next one bye guys